All right, here's a little no-no drill situation you can set up in your yard. We have a shady spot and a tree that grows like this, a live oak tree here in South Texas. And we placed a little um, mental barrier. It's a very safe, short, you know, maybe 10, 12 inches tall little log to jump over. Again, it's a mental challenge, not a physical challenge. It's safe, no nails or branches poking up. And here I am running it myself to demonstrate. Go down, get one. You don't cheat around the obstacles going out or back. The main goal of this drill is to condition the dog to know here in a resend, which I mainly do up close. As the dog progresses and you back up, you may also work on casting over an obstacle. Yeah. All right, so I like to start sitting the dog here. I walk out to uh, plant the bumpers. Very obvious, use a stake. Um, I think I have a whitish stake here, but make it super obvious, white bumpers, short grass. We do not want the uh, bumpers hard to find. I leave the dog sitting and then I call the dog out to me, have it jump both obstacles. If this is a problem for the dog, you should just work on this and possibly shorten up if needed. So she jumped it, now I start close, I throw one over the second obstacle, and send on back. Okay, good, she went over it, nice. Oh, cheat around, stop with the whistle, cast. And there she dropped the bumper. We try not to get too worked up about that, but she grabbed it again, cheating around, casting, and working on the dog coming back over the obstacle. Now, as long as she stops good on the whistle and makes eye contact, and I feel as you know, trying hard, I'm not going to nick the dog. I will enforce, you know, the back command, the whistle stop or sit, I'll definitely enforce, and a recall here. I always try to enforce those things, but be patient with the dog actually learning to jump over this. As I stated before, this can be a big mental challenge for the dog. And I'm just letting you see a lot of uh, me working through it here. A lot of times in the videos, we just show the finished product, but here is uh, actually working through it. Sorry about the footage here. Um, seems like on this iPhone, when you, when you get it to where it's in the center, and then you transfer it, transfer it to uh, edit it. It cuts off the top for some reason. So no stopper, toot. She sits, no here. And we got bumpers all over the place, so just reset up. With these fast dogs, it's, it's good to, especially these fast dogs, it's good to blow a fast whistle and let that dog sit there a little bit. It's so tempting to get where the you, the human, starts going fast. Anyways, there I got had a good good run. Got her to jump, went out and back. So now I'm gonna put her in the stakeout. We go a little potty. We get a drink of water. And then I go off and I do something else. I think I trained another dog. Did something else for for five ten minutes and then come back. If you're going to be dynamic, you're going to keep working on this so you make some nice progress. And we're cheating. No, here. Trying to stay calm, but firm. No, here. She went over it. Back over. Okay, good. All right, let's try to get one more. So I'm kind of—I felt like just getting it one time wasn't enough. If we can get it—if you can get it two times in a row correct, now you started a pattern. Two in a row is the start of a pattern. So then we took a break. Same deal. I trained another dog. Did something else. Came back to it. Now on the first try, she's over and back correct. Now I'm stopping for the day. Uh, on other days, I will keep backing up, backing up, backing up until we can get the whole the length of it um, done right. Thanks for watching.